This is the joy of missing out. You know FOMO, now meet JOMO. JOMO, the joy of missing out. On hole one, we feel that breeze straight into our faces right off the ocean. I'm hitting a driver because that wind is pumping so strong. Because the tee is set so high above the fairway, it's gonna have so much chance to get smashed by the wind. So I may as well give it the most ball speed I can with a driver. If I leave it short, it's gonna leave way too much to do on an uphill shot with an iron from the fairway. With this approach, what I need to do is keep the ball as close to the top of the hill without breaking the top of the hill, it's gonna get smashed by the wind and it'll stop the ball short. So I try and hit a trajectory that's going to just peek over the hill and run up onto the green. I have two options to get up and down here and I'm gonna show them both to you. are not long and so I want to think back from the green to leave my best approach shot considering the wind is directly into me. FOMO would say just smash as far as you can and then leave whatever random shot comes but I'm trying to think more along the lines of the wind's into me I want to be able to control that distance. How do I control that distance with partial wedges on firm turf with the wind blowing? I don't know but can I control fuller shots where I've got some experience from the rest of the trip before this round? Yes, I can. Now this hole is crazy. It's extremely long and it's dead into the wind, no chance. So I knew immediately I'd have to play this hole as a par five. There's no hope of hitting this green in two shots. So that takes a lot of pressure off the way you play the hole. Because you've resigned yourself to the fact that this is not a par four for you, it makes the three shots to hit the green so stress-free, you just missed out on all that stress by adopting the Jomo attitude. So with that in mind, all I need to do is keep the ball somewhere in play. It doesn't even matter where because we know the most important is to set up that third shot into the green so that you can hit the green on your third. London is not a very long course, but with the wind coming in off the ocean, the opening four or five holes are playing an additional 30 or 40 yards longer. But once we turn down breeze, that short course plays even shorter. Now this information is very misleading because you look at the scorecard and you see the short distances of the holes, but you don't realize that there are undulations. There's blind tee shots, which are always tricky the first time you play a golf course. Plus they're so short, it makes you think, okay, I'm just gonna blast the ball at the green but you have no idea what's up there because it's a blind shot. So all I want to do on the first attempt is to make some easy pars. I'll probably never play this golf course again, so I just want to enjoy a stress-free, joy of missing out experience. And so far, according to my statistics, the six iron on short par fours is pretty much a certain par with only one bogey every seven holes. I can't read it, man.
I make the turn and realize that my microphone has been unplugged the whole time. That's why I have a voiceover. I also inherited some guys coming up the rear from nowhere. And as a single following a four ball, it starts to grate on my tits with the guys behind me now edging up on me. Now that causes me to get a little bit edgy and I make a silly bogey on the par five. And I'm gonna put an end to your hacker mentality because being a hacker is purely mentality. You can change your mentality at any time to go from being a hacker to being a player. The first step to not being a hacker is to plan. Now that bunker down there, there's a double fairway with another hole. 213 to clear. But if we go left of it, we're in a good position. The hole's only 350 yards long. So we have to plan to leave ourselves, not in that bunker, but with an approach shot into the green. And I think a three iron will stay short of that bunker or left of that bunker. Let's just avoid bunkers as much as possible because that's what gets us in trouble off the tee. Now another way to stop being a hacker is to use your GPS. You've got 122 to the front, 157 to the back. So into this breeze, a club that will clear 122 to hit the front and won't go longer than 157 and we're into the breeze, the pin's at the middle at 139. So let's hit our 157 club, the eight iron, and hope the wind holds it up. Two clubs, which will allow us to stay on the green and at worst on the front of the green. We've missed in the correct side. So left is good. There's a big donut bunker there, which you don't want to go there. So everything favors the left side. If you look at the map, which I'll put on the screen for you. You want, you want to know where to miss on the green to stop hacking. Because hacking is when you just put yourself in positions that you don't need to be. Oh, come on. Putt's got it for one day. Damn. Damn. So this is a 464 yard par four. Even as like a, I don't know what I'm probably on this trip, probably looking like three year handicap. I'm still seeing this as a par five. Now, if it's a par five, I don't have to worry so much about hitting the green. Let's get it close to the green. Let's pitch it on and try and make a putt. We might surprise ourselves. But as a hacker, immediately, if it's over 400 yards, par five, because you're putting so much pressure on yourself to get there for the par number. This is the thing you've got to do to change your mindset to be a non-hacker, because hackers, want to get there in pro regulation when they don't have the skills. See how we do. Get it up around the green, maybe make a four. Haven't hit that very well, but that should roll out 200 something yards. So we've got 234 to the pin. Now, this is a perfect example of where people go wrong. People will hit the top of their bag as hard as they can. And it's pointless because you're going to get yourself in so much trouble. We need to clear that bunker, which is 70 yards short of the green. So I need like a, I need like a 170, 180 yard shot. So I'm just gonna hit myself a seven iron to show you, don't hit the top of your bag as hard as you can. We've got trouble left and right. You can top it. You can do all kinds of bad things. Let's just get it to a place we can pitch and enjoy this game. Now, of course, could I have gone for the green and rolled up with like a five or six iron? Yes, of course. But I'm trying to show you that here's a bunker you can get into. If you, if you top one or hit one really bad, you can be intentional and lay one just short of this bunker. Or you can be intentional like I've been and leave it over there short of the next bunker to pitch it on or put it on. There's many ways to play, but hitting your longest club, if you on another course with more trouble left, more trouble right, you're gonna get yourself into deep stuff. Look at this stuff over here. Let's say you slice one really bad and it finishes in there. Now you gotta go look for it. You gotta look for it in that long stuff. And maybe you lose it, maybe you don't. But now you got a tough shot with no control over the ball. I have probably as much control as I could ask for over this ball. And I like putting around these greens. So let's see how we do with the Texas wedge. I mean, that's just the way I see it. I, I don't really, I've watched too many guys from the, the top of their distance range, 230, 235. Meanwhile, they hit their three wood, maybe 210. Now they're trying to pump another 25 yards onto it. Mostly what happens is topping, slicing, hooking into shit. Like luckily, okay, this is a long hole. So they're giving you a lot of forgiveness. 
But if it's another hole with like stuff on the left and right, you're going to be in big trouble. And then you're scoring bad. Now I'm just going to putt this and let's hopefully hit the green. Might not. But at least we eliminate big numbers. See, so we're on in three. We've given ourselves probably like, I don't know, nine footer, eight footer for the, for the par. That's all you need. We've given ourselves a great chance at eight foot for the par. And if you're further away, you're giving yourself a chance for a bogey on a stroke two index hole. Right. Little right of the hole. Okay, we're on. We're just off the green. And that's what, that's another thing. As a hacker, you've got to be happy with fringe or around the green, puttable in regulation. Don't get too worried about hitting the ball close like a PGA to a player. You're probably super into golf. You've been watching the PGA and it makes you think you've got to be perfect and hit these great shots. This, for anyone over a scratch handicap, is a great shot. We're in range of a putt. Don't get too sucked into perfection. You will never be perfect, so use your imperfect game to score better. No putts today, players. No putts today, but that's a good two putt for a nice three. Now my hacker friends, 505 yard hole. Are you getting there in three shots? I don't know where all this traffic came from. They, I don't know, they don't seem to know who I am. Four pitching wedges, four whatever. Now, I'm not saying you have to do that, but I'm saying, look at the perspective. A 200-yard shot off the tee leaves you 300. That leaves you 150, 150, 165, 135. You have to think these, uh, these holes through in bite-sized chunks. You're getting too intimidated as a hacker by the length of the hole. Break the hole into three to four shots and begin to understand there's no pressure for you to hit this in three. And if you want to, you can, but you can hit it in four shots. Now, the reason I show you this stuff, and I don't tell you, hit it as long as possible all the time, like a Muhu Mampara, these guys are looking for balls this entire hole. Now, looking for golf balls is probably the most debilitating thing in golf. Absolutely my least favorite thing. That's why I don't like hitting driver far off course. I don't like hitting clubs that I'm not confident with to go have to look for them. So I'm avoiding looking for golf balls, and I want you to not hit shots that make you have to look for golf balls. Because when you lose them and when you're looking for them constantly, it brings you down. When you come down, you hit worse shots. I want you to be hitting great shots. I want you to be... See, so the wind's got it now, moving it left, but the distance looks good. Yeah, we're a pin high on the green. And we leave a tap in. So when you're putting, go in, will align your pace to the line you've chosen. Pace. That's a nice putt. Beauty. So we've got 180 to the middle, gonna be probably a bit of a fly alive from the rough. Um, down breeze. I think we're just gonna hit a very, very a nice and firm niner straight over those bunkers. Let's see what the hole looks like if we go over those bunkers. So we're coming, we're coming from here. So if we go over the bunkers, we're probably gonna be quite money there. I'll take a hard wedge, because because then I don't want it to like roll too far, I'd rather know where it's going. Yes. Got lots of bumps and humps in the way. Let's just go straight at the pin and get it on the green. All we need is it on the green. So it's on the green now. 
it's going to be a longish putt it's still rolling okay stop okay so that's one option the other option to eliminate at least the first bit of the slope but titties to the target open face we can probably bounce this just short of the green and just lip out so we just lipped out on that one that was a nice shot let's go with like a 48 to clear this hump in front of us that's the most scary hump that can affect your shot the most but then there's lots of humps in between us so we have to really guess try land this about halfway so there we go pretty similar result to the putt three options and we leave ourselves a little button runner. And that for me is the three iron. Just, what do I need more than that? A little 90 yards. Or a one putt. Oh, look at that go away. Two degree because I'm straight down, Breeze. Nothing all day.